In our last video, we uh, learned how to prepare an income statement. We summarized our revenues and expenses to calculate net income. And I, I can see my penmanship is terrible, but I think I, I made the point uh, about how to do one of those. Uh, our next financial statement we're going to look at is a very short one and a, a relatively simple one. I think this video will be much shorter in length. The next statement we're going to look at is called the Statement of Retained Earnings. So to get started, again, uh, I hope you've downloaded the, the file, and I, this is kind of a work in process. If you haven't looked at the first video, go back and view the previous video on, on income statements, but this is kind of how we left it. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to start with a title. Uh, and so let's title this uh, the name of the company, as we're getting in the habit of doing, and the name of our company is... Fred's Tailoring Service. The name of the financial statement, and as I said, the name of this financial statement is the Statement of Retained, this is all supposed to be centered, I can see it's going to be off-center, Earnings. I should have started a little bit further to the left. Uh, so Fred's Tailoring Service, Statement of Retained Earnings, and this, much like the income statement, gets dated for the year ended and then the year end date. And our year end date was February 28th, 2012. Okay, so we've got a beautiful title, but I haven't said anything about the statement of retained earnings. So let's talk a little bit about what the statement of retained earnings does. It summarizes the retained earnings account for the year. And what the retained earnings account is, is it's an account that keeps track of how much of the company's net income belongs to the shareholders. And it's basically affected by two things. It's affected by more than that, but if you're in an introductory class, you can think of it as being affected by two things. One, when a company earns net income, that's the shareholders of the company making money. So we said net income is revenues minus expenses. When a company makes revenues, that helps the shareholders when they have expenses that hurts the shareholders but if the revenues are higher than the expenses and the company has a positive net income the net income will be you know help their retained earnings so the math is we'll say we'll take our retained earnings from the beginning of the year we're going to add any net income we have if we have a net loss we'll deduct it off and we're going to subtotal that's our starting point. We're going to say, here's what the company started with in terms of its retained earnings. And again, that's sort of the shareholder's piece of the, the company. Uh, so we're going to say, here's what we started with in terms of the retained earnings. And here's how it improved or, or worsened during the year. Now we know, looking at our income statement, we made 59 grand. So basically, our company's retained earnings must have gone up by 59 grand. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with. We have, let's see, a retained earnings. We noted that with shareholders' equity. Oh, here it is. I'm going to make that like a blue color. So retained earnings was 104 grand. You can see that's on March 1st, 2011. That's the start of this fiscal year. If the fiscal year end is February 28th, 2012, the first day of the year was March 1st, 2011. And you can see that there's 365 days in between. Ignore leap years. I'm not sure what the leap year situation is. I just had a little mini heart attack. Uh, just ignore the effect of leap years. Um, okay, so we're going to start with our retained earnings at the beginning of this year. And as we said, the beginning of this year was uh, March 1st, 2011. So I'm going to say, okay, what was my retained earnings? on March 1st, 2011, and just quickly flipping back there, we see that our retained earnings was $104,000, so I'm going to fill that in here. Our retained earnings is $104,000, and we said we're going to add to that our net income. If we had a net loss, we would deduct it, but because it's net income, we add it. I actually like to write the word add you can, you don't have to, it's just a stylistic choice. Our net income comes from our income statement that we prepared earlier and our net income was $59,000. So let me fill that in. Net income of 
thousand dollars and we're going to subtotal here this subtotal we don't have to write a name we don't have to write down any words we're just going to write down a number so our subtotal 104 plus 59 is 163 thousand dollars you'll notice on our income statement I use lists and totals and I kind of have the totals off to the offset to the right and my lists of numbers offset to the left the statement of retained earnings everything is offset to the right if you're kind of looking at it on a page so we've got our retained earnings we said oh right the shareholders got fifty nine thousand dollars more in earnings because the company made money and that's the purpose of you know that's why I would invest in a company I want it to make money so this company made fifty nine grand for us the shareholders but there's something that negatively will impact our retained earnings and that is if the shareholders take a dividend and we did indeed take a dividend you can see it down here I'm gonna highlight it in blue what a dividend is is when a shareholder decides that they want to take money out of the company they're entitled to it they're the shareholders it's their company they're allowed to take money out uh, if they uh, wish uh, now obviously you need to have control of the company or, or the board of directors needs to uh, approve a dividend but if you're in a controlling situation in your company you can absolutely take money out of your company it's no problem at all and uh, this company chose to took this shareholders this company chose to take uh, forty three thousand dollars presumably Fred is the guy and he probably owns the whole company himself and he said I want to take forty three grand out uh, in a dividend so he wrote himself a check for forty three thousand dollars no problem Fred's allowed to do this but retained earnings says this is the amount of money we're keeping in the company the word retained means keeping it in earnings means income so it's saying this is the net income we're keeping in the company well when Fred pays himself a dividend he's taking money out of his retained earnings so we always will be deducting dividends here so I'm going to deduct and I write the word uh, less when I want to minus it so I'm gonna say less dividends and just to remind myself Fred's dividends were forty three thousand dollars so I'll just punch that in here forty three thousand dollars and so our total here 163 minus 43 I'll put that in brackets as a negative 163 minus 43 is hundred and twenty thousand dollars this is our retained earnings at the end of the year or our retained earnings on the fiscal year end date which was February 28th 2011 it's the bottom line of a financial statement we underline it twice and again if you're a stickler for dollar signs you want a dollar sign on the top and the bottom of each column uh, actually the top of each column and the bottom line of the financial statements and there we have it so again the statement of retained earnings summarizes how the company's retained earnings has changed in the year again remembering the term retained earnings means earnings that are kept in the company so we said well we started with hundred and four grand of earnings we're keeping in the company we made fifty nine thousand dollars that's great that's fifty nine more that we could be keeping in the company but Fred wanted to take some money out for himself and that's he's well within his right to do it dividends aren't a bad thing he took forty three thousand out of the company leaving hundred and twenty thousand dollars in the company for the company to use and to grow that's our statement of retained earnings next up will be our balance sheet